Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, excited to uh, announce uh, 14 uh, young men that have signed onto our program and, and a 15th that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on. But uh, um, really excited for our staff to be able to bring these uh, young men into the fold. Uh, it's been a challenging time, as, as we all know, and to think uh, how long we've been recruiting so many of these, uh, some of these players and the fact that uh, uh, none of them had an official visit. None of them we were able to go see at the school. None of them we were able to have a home visit with. Everything was done virtual. Everything was done via Zoom. Um, a few kids have been on campus, maybe when they were juniors, uh, which obviously helped us quite a bit uh, in the long run. Uh, but uh, I know there was uh, a, a handful of guys that uh, we don't believe have ever been on campus, even not even coming up on their own sometime in the summer or fall. And uh, what a challenge that is. And that's, that shows you um, the confidence that the, these young men and their families have in, in what we're doing here at Kansas State, uh, and confidence in, in the relationships that they have been building with um, Taylor Bratt, the recruiting staff, the, the position coach, the recruiting coach, the, myself, the head coach, uh, that, um, that we were able to, to sign such a, such a quality class uh, in, uh, in, in the limited resources and limited time that we, we had um, face to face with these guys. So um, thrilled for these guys. It's a special day. Uh, I, I don't care what kind of pandemic year, all that other stuff. What a special day for these young men and their families uh, to know where they're going to college, um, to be able to be a part of the K-State family. Uh, we're excited because it's a, it's a great day for, for us at Kansas State to welcome these uh, young men and their families. And so we couldn't be more thrilled to, to have these guys. And we had a pretty good Zoom this morning with a number of them uh, and, and celebrated. Uh, we did something different that we hadn't done. We had cameras kind of put up all over uh, veneer, weight room, outside my office, trophy area, um, offices, and, and uh, had a bunch of them on together uh, and started to build that bond with each other. Uh, and it was a pretty cool morning. So uh, excited about these guys, and we'll open it up for questions. This one here from Derek. Yeah, Coach, we always hear about a player that just looked like a totally different prospect from his junior film to his senior film. Do any of the 14 guys jump out to you when it comes to that, just, just that big leap in that small window? Um, you know, it's probably hard to answer that because a lot of them we didn't see as juniors other than on film and maybe didn't see their body frame. And then you watch a limited amount of, of games that they did have in, in their senior year. Some guys played only a handful of games and a few guys got, got a full season. Some guys maybe only gotten one or two games. But um, um, just somebody that jumps out at me um, that I was able to go see in, in person. I was able to go see Devontae Pritchard in person play uh, when he was a junior. And I thought right away – um, there's a kid that, that is a Big 12 football player that uh, will come and will strike you, uh, was a really good athlete on offense as well, but on defense is where we're going to play him. And Devontae was a kid that jumped out at me really quickly. As a, of, it's going to be a phenomenal Big 12 defensive player. And then I know you want to talk about the guys you landed, but, but with the recruiting being what it was, did you feel like you guys ran into situations a number of times where – you could have been in on a, in on a kid, but couldn't because you couldn't get that visit. Uh, potentially, uh, I, I don't know that for a fact, but um, I, I know this: the ones that we have been on and stayed on, uh, and have had phenomenal communication with and committed to us early, we were able to hold, and that's the thing that I was excited about. Then and, and give Taylor Bratt and, and Chuck Willie so much credit um, uh, because uh, they were the, the behind the scenes guys that. Um, kept us up to date as coaches and kept in contact with those guys. Uh, and and uh, so we're excited about this class. And um, I know there's some tremendous football players in here. You know, you might need an early impact guy at receiver. Is RJ Garcia someone that you think can, can do that? Yeah, uh, RJ's a, a really talented uh, player from Berkeley Prep. And uh, his dad's a basketball coach. So he's grown up in the, in the coaching world and um, uh, understands it really mature player. He's put on uh, some added weight already, had a good season for them uh, in his senior year. Uh, and he will be here in the summer and we're excited about him uh, as well as Brennan Hawkins is a, is a, a big body is a six, four wide receiver that that'll be here as well this summer. So, um, you know, we, we feel good about uh, adding two wide receivers. Thanks guys. Kels. 
Hey, Chris, uh, I know it's super early here, but how, how good do you project Jake Rubley to be as a college quarterback? Well, we're excited about Jake. Um, you know, we've been recruiting him for an awful long time. He's been on campus a few times. Um, I go way back with his father, TJ, that uh, uh, grew up in Iowa, Davenport, Iowa guy, and, and I hosted his dad on an official visit at Northern Iowa um, back in the late 80s. Um, that, uh, uh, so I've known TJ for a while, and, and so I, I know the pedigree. Uh, TJ played in the NFL, and uh, it was a great quarterback at Tulsa, and uh, Jake's very much the same mold as his father. And uh, Jake loves the game of football. And that's what you're looking for from the quarterback position is somebody that loves the game of football, uh, that is a sponge to want to come in and learn from Coach Klein and, and learn from Coach Mess and, and get to get in our system quickly. And um, he's got a really strong arm, a really accurate player. And, and we're excited to add another uh, piece to that quarterback room. Did landing him so early in the process help bring in other guys uh, during the 20 cycle? Yeah, absolutely. When uh, uh, he actually committed to Coach Klein and I um, the the day of the uh, Liberty Bowl last year, and um, that was really great news that day, and and uh, lifted our spirits after uh, a tough game. But uh, uh, he absolutely did a great job of of trying to help out, and maybe kids reached out to him and. Um, when you when you land somebody of Jake's caliber, I think people take notice, and and uh, uh, it definitely helped us. And I also want to ask: Is it cool for you personally to land a kid from North Dakota? I, I can't think of the best <laughs> one of those who came here. Yeah, Andrew Line Gang, uh, so excited. Andrew came down for our Iowa State game uh, last year. Uh, got to see the. Uh, the cold, windy day, and he, he just said that was a typical day in North Dakota uh, that was they're, they're really used to. And, and so, and Andrew knows how to win. Uh, all they do uh, at Bismarck Century is win state championships, and he won another one this year. Um, and uh, we were fortunate enough to, to land Andrew. He's a versatile offensive lineman uh, that can play guard or tackle, very athletic, uh, very physical, great, great uh, personality. People are going to really enjoy getting to know Andrew. And uh, uh, that's Carson Wentz's uh, high school as well. So uh, Coach Wingenbach uh, helped us out get another guy uh, from Bismarck Century. And, and we're just thrilled to have Andrew and his family join our family. John? Yeah, Chris, I know you answered this in, in context of RJ Garcia earlier. But are, are there a, a couple of players from this class you feel like have a real chance to make an impact early for you guys? Well, we hope they all can have an impact early. You don't know when that's going to be uh, as far as based on positions, based on needs, based on injuries, based on all that stuff. But, uh, you know, we've told everyone to be prepared to come in here and compete, whether it's, you know, the, the four-game rule is such a huge factor. I don't care if you're a, a linebacker or a wide receiver to a, to a lineman. Um, you know, Carver Willis played, and I know this was a free year, but Carver Willis played for us as a true freshman So, uh, in the offensive line. So everybody has that opportunity, and, and that's something that uh, I know that excites people uh, right now with us building our roster and continuing to build depth uh, on our football team that uh, um, if you show up and do things the right way, learn our system, um, buy in, uh, be a team guy first, you have a great opportunity to see the field early. Obviously, it's been pretty well publicized uh, how heavy the transfer market is this year. How many kids are in the portal right now? How hard do you guys plan to, to pursue transfers as, as things move on here? Yeah, well, we're going to have to a little bit, but we're still having conversations with seniors. Um, so we don't know where that's going to land with, with a handful of guys that uh, haven't made that decision, if they're going to come back or not. But, uh, um, you know, we, like everybody else, will continue to tr try to help uh, build our roster and make sure that um, – you know, we're, we're equipped at, at all positions to be able to handle a tough Big 12 schedule for 2021. I know you'll have Jake and Will, obviously, a quarterback next year. Do you, do you have an update on Skyler and whether or not you anticipate him being back? You know, he and I are visiting later on uh, this week. Uh, it was kind of the plan all along was um, he was continuing his rehab and, and I was going to get through signing date. And then Skyler and I um, probably on Friday we will have a conversation and we'll see where his mind's at. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. Yeah. Derek? Yeah, Coach, you signed 14. A lot of them were committed for quite a while, but did any of them kind of make you sweat up until this morning at all? You know, no. And that's what's really neat about this class is we've been 
talking to these guys for so long and communicating with these guys for so long and they have been communicating with each other for so long that they really developed a bond together. Uh, and, and so we had all of them in relatively early today based on what time zone they were in. Uh, and, and, you know, last night when we had a, a staff meeting, um, middle of the evening, we talked about that, uh, were we worried about anybody and, and we really weren't, um, we were very confident that these guys were going to sign and, uh, they've been with us all along. Um, they knew the struggles of COVID and the struggles this year that, that, uh, everybody has had and, and they were, they never wavered. And that's, that's, uh, the sign of the right kind of guys that, uh, are going to impact your program. I know this was your third class, but your second full class at Kansas State where you were there for the entire time. This was a, not an ordinary year, but how has your recruiting approach, I mean, at least in any detail, kind of evolved since you've been at Kansas State? Well, we're learning. For sure it's evolving, and it's evolving every year, and we have to continue uh, to, to talk about it as a staff. And, you know, this year was so unique that um, for us, you know, finding guys within a drivable distance was very, very important. Um, and, you know, moving forward, we still need to win in the state of Kansas. That That's first and foremost. We need to win in the state of Kansas. We're, we're, we're winning games uh, with a lot of Kansas kids, and that's going to be our focal point. Uh, and then branch it off from there uh, and, and kind of have a circle around that and see who can drive here four or five, six hours. And then obviously we're going to still hit the areas of Texas and Georgia and Florida uh, and, and some upper Midwest kids, obviously, uh, like we did with Andrew from North Dakota from a specific uh, position with it being O-line. Um, so we'll still have our main footprint, um, but in the same respect, we have to go inside out. We have to be able to win in Kansas first. My last question for you is when when you're looking at what you've done so far um you have 14 guys in but there's clearly more spots available was that by design do you think you're going to use february like the traditional one as well that's a good question uh we're still evaluating some we still have some scholarships uh, available we're still really looking hard at some some kids to give them an opportunity to walk on because of so many kids that have walked on to this program dating back to when coach was here to to just in the last couple of years so many walk-ons have earned scholarships here uh, it's a great place for walk-ons to come because they know they're going to get an opportunity they know they're going to get treated fairly they're going to get treated well and have a chance to to have an impact and earn scholarships so we'll continue to look at at some walk-on guys as well as um, keep looking at our overall depth we still need to probably wait a week or so get some answers from some seniors and see where we need to fill in. Thanks, Coach. Greg. Hello, Coach. Um, this is a very exciting day, obviously, for uh, the signees and for the football staff, but it also comes in the same day when K-State announced a pause in its football activities and its withdrawal from bowl game consideration. Can, share, can you share your thoughts and reactions on that? Yeah, I was disappointed. If you'd have asked me a week ago, how are the preparations for, for bowl games going or for bowl game was going? And I said, I would have said really well. Uh, I'd had a number of conversations with, with uh, Gene Taylor and, and we fully believed we were going to be invited to a bowl. And I, and I expressed that to the guys that uh, it was probably going to be one of two bowls, but uh, um, did you guys want to play? And they, they, they all were like, yeah, we want to play. Um, and, and so we were working just with our young kids all of last week and had four great practices with kids that had not practiced or missed 30 plus days. And then um, over the weekend, we had uh, several kids not feel well. Um, and a handful of those guys tested positive. And then you throw in the close contacts to those handful of guys uh, that we had uh, test positive and, uh, we've got really smart people around here uh, in, in our medical profession that the track record says when you have the amount that we had in a two-day span, we're probably going to get a few more, whether it's in three days, five days, seven days. And when you look at having to pause, and that's we were actually having a, uh, a little dodgeball tournament, uh, and I got a call that, that from Matt Thomason that uh, uh, we were going to pause. And, and um, so – you combine those things, not knowing when you're going to restart, as well as the amount of kids that um, are kind of bandaged together or either scheduled to have surgery or already had surgery. 
Um, we just didn't think we could probably pull it off. Um, and we did not want to be in a position where we would have accepted a, a bowl invitation on Sunday. And then we have a testing on Monday and we'd had six more kids test positive uh, and put ourselves in a position where we'd have to um, renege on something. And I just didn't want to do, do that. And um, I I'd had long conversations with, with Gene Taylor and I'm at peace with the fact that we're doing the best we can for the health and safety of this football team uh, now and moving forward. Uh, and, and so hopefully these kids that have gotten positive aren't, aren't going to be real sick and um, can get through it. Jake. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you, what stands out to you the most about Devon Weathers, knowing the program he comes for in Web City and just what the type of player he can become for Kansas State? Well, for starters, he comes from a tradition-laden program, and uh, Web City's uh, been phenomenal for uh, decades. And um, Devon was fun to watch because we didn't know to project him as a defensive back, a linebacker, uh, we knew he could be a running back. And, and so at his size and athleticism, he's a phenomenal baseball player too, but at his athleticism, we said, that we just got to get the kid in the program. Um, and uh, we wanted to, we'll find wherever we can to, to put him. And then as you kept watching his senior tape unfold, it became more and more clear to us uh, that he's that big back that, um, that's got great speed, great elusiveness, can run through arm tackles uh, that uh, uh, we're excited to be able to, to pair back there in the backfield and, and, and utilize him there and be a great special teams player. And um, I just think athletically, when you have somebody with his skill set uh, and the ability to run and be physical like he is, he was going to be a can't miss and would help us somewhere. But we'll start him out at running back. Got three hands raised. We'll go through those, starting with Kellis. Yeah, Chris, linebacker seems like an important uh, position for you guys, especially building youth moving forward. What can you tell us about the two guys you signed here in this class? Well, we're excited. We talked about Devontae already, and I saw him play. And then uh, you want to watch a kid on film in, in Gavin Hasselhorst, you're not going to see a kid that loves the game and plays the game as hard as Gavin does on an every-down basis. And he's played some defensive end. He's played some stand-up for, for Hayes. And, and we see him – as a kid that we know could play that, but we see him at the next level being a, an inside linebacker, just how physical he is. He doesn't get blocked. He plays the game the right way. He understands the game of football well. So it gives us, uh, you know, some really good uh, young players in there to be able to build off of. And uh, I'm excited about those two guys because they love football uh, and, and, they, and they're physical guys. Adam? Coach, as this is your third year recruiting for K-State, is your main focus when you're recruiting of bringing in players that would be the best for K-State, or are you also looking around at what's going on in the recruiting action of the whole Big 12 so that way you know more of what you're competing for? Um, no, we just focus on ourselves more than anything and how they can impact our program offensively, defensively, special teams, how they can impact uh, what we're doing as far as getting the right kind of guys with with high character and integrity in here, um, do they do they want to play at K State? And and uh, we're not going to beg anybody to come to Kansas State. Kansas State's too special of a place, um, and we have kids that that generally want to be here. Uh, and so for us, we just focus in on what we're looking for and what we need. Um, it's just like if if somebody's a two star, three star, four star, or whatever, do they fit what we're looking for? Uh, and that's the most important thing for us. We'll go to the last one here, John, and then we'll have Coach announce our uh, 15th signing. I was just going to ask uh, real quick, Chris, on, on Joe Urban, a uh, player that opted out for you guys. Is the plan right now, you still think things are on track for him to come back? Yeah, the plan is for Joe to come back um, once we start second semester, you bet. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Well, I get to announce our 15th signee in uh, Gunner Reed, and we call him G-Man. And uh, uh, Gunner's uh, from Overland Park, Kansas, uh, was born in Salina, and uh, will graduate from Shawnee Mission West uh, High School this May. But uh, you talk about uh, somebody that embodies toughness, uh, resiliency, character, integrity, um, always has a smile on his face. Uh, G-Man's been through an awful lot. G-Man's been through 36 surgeries. 
and three open heart surgeries. Um, and Taylor Bratt and we had a Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, day with, with G-Man on our, on our uh, Zoom with some players a few weeks ago. And he had an impact on all of us. Um, and to see what he's fighting through on a daily basis uh, and to see the fight and resolve that he has, he has gone through with a smile on his face uh, puts everything into perspective for me. And um, so as we continued on and visit with him, shoot, we, we had him on the sideline with, with Taylor um, at Baylor during pregame and showing some things that, uh, that uh, uh, talking to our guys during pregame and stuff. Um, I, I, I sent him uh, an audience of one bracelet that I got from Carson Wentz and Carson helped me um, get another one for for G-Man and G-Man's wearing that thing with with pride because we do it for um, for the good Lord and for everybody that's blessed us to have the opportunities that we have um, and, and G-Man's our hero and uh, when I had a chance uh, earlier this week to visit with Coach Bratt and, and Taylor and I decided we're going to sign him and he's going to be a Kansas State wildcat for life. And um, it's tough because as tough as this has been for us as a season, as tough as this has been for these players, um, nobody's as tough as, as Gunner. Nobody's as tough as G-Man. Nobody's as tough as his family um, to persevere and to be what – and to go through what he has gone through um, his whole life um, – and to do it with the pride he has. And he loves Kansas State, he loves the Chiefs, and he loves the Royals. And I know that those three teams help him through every day. And any bit of joy we can, we can provide for him, uh, we're going to do that. And I can't thank our players enough for reaching out to him on so many different occasions and lifting his spirits because um, this, is a, this is a young man that uh, um, is going to be a wildcat for life and Iman and – we love you, G-Man, and we're always rooting for you. We're always praying for you, and so happy to welcome you to the K-State family. So appreciate everybody, and um, hope everybody has a great Christmas. 